Welcome everyone, Kostin here with my essential unit guide for the dwarves, covering the unit types you should focus on during the course of every single dwarven campaign, as well as a discussion on their lore choices and, of course, hero choices. Uh, to start with the lords, generally speaking, early on in the campaign, rune lords are the better choice because you just won't have the runesmiths. And while uh, dwarven lords certainly can be good later on, but only once you acquire enough runesmiths in your armies to be able to constantly cast the various runes that you have access to. So, effectively, once you get to a reasonable number of tier 3 settlements and you're getting quite a few runesmiths in your campaign, that's the point where you might want to just go for dwarven lords. Otherwise, rune lords, especially with the Anvil of Doom, are the better choice early on in a campaign. Though, you shouldn't ignore the traits that lords do have. Uh, maybe it is worth uh, starting a couple of dwarven campaigns, getting a bunch of lords with the traits you want, especially construction cost benefit that can be pretty useful in a dwarven campaign early on. In terms of heroes, obviously all of them are pretty good. Uh, runesmiths um, early on and most of the dwarven Legendary Lords, actually all of them except Forgrim, do start with a Runesmith in their campaign. But what's quite powerful about Runesmiths is they have the Rune of Wrath and Ruin. They have the ability of making enemies more resist, uh, more less resistant to missiles. They have the ability of buffing your armor. Uh, they have the ability of helping out with your Vigor. Uh, engineers, of course, for all the various range benefits that you do get with them. From, uh, for instance, ballistic calibration, as an example, or getting uh, entrenchment. Uh, flash bomb, of course, can be useful, and restock to replenish ammunition, especially for artillery, is always good to have. Fanes are not necessarily so important at least early on, but they do give you some variety later on in your campaign with rangers. Because fanes do have a skill line choice that allows them to give rangers snipe. So if we look at rangers, and the only ranger unit I'd say is worth using are bugman's rangers. Uh, the reason behind it is that rangers, compared to quarrelers, they're pretty much the exact same stats, but obviously they uh, don't have the same kind of armor, so they're less resistant to damage. But the crucial thing about Bugman's Rangers is that they have liquid fortification on them. And of course, like other Rangers, they have Vanguard deployment and stock. Rangers with a Fane hero can uh, work wonders because that hero will give them snipe so they can shoot while still in stealth. But that's a very situational army that you would want to use, but it is certainly a powerful army to use as the dwarves. Outside of that particular circumstance, here are the units you'd want to recruit in a dwarven campaign. Very early on in a campaign, what you'd want to do is get dwarf warriors, the regular version, the shielded version, not the two-handed version. The two-handed version is not worth it because while they're certainly going to do better in melee, when you look at dwarven campaigns, every single one of them, you're usually dealing with a lot of range or a combination of ranged and melee. You're not just dealing with pure melee. So dwarf warriors are the better choice. They have a silver shield, high level of leadership and armor, and pretty good melee uh, stats. The two-handed version basically gets rid of the silver shield. That is a mistake as far as I see it. And gives them better, um, better weapon strength and melee. And most of their damage is going to come from our piercing. I don't think that's worth it early on in a campaign for dwarves. And later on, you just have better choices with it. The other choice uh, unit that you should recruit are miners with blasting charges. Don't bother with the regular miners. They're not worth it compared to the ones with blasting charges. Like if you're ever recruiting miners in a campaign, the regular ones, you're doing it because you're in a province where you just need to fill up an army and you don't have any other choices because you don't have a barracks. But if you do have a barracks, then obviously you should get miners who are blasting charges because they're virtually the same stats, and they also have that explosive available to them. While they're not as good as dwarf warriors in a pure melee fight, 
and they're obviously lacking any kind of shield. One of the things to be said about miners with blasting charges is that they'll do a significant amount of damage on clumps of units. So if you can manage to blob the enemy up and then use the blasting charges, then these guys will do quite a bit of damage in battles when it matters. But that's just a, a tier 1 army, like Miners of Blasting Charges and Dwarf Warriors. But it is a very limited army that you'd only use very early on in a campaign, and in some campaigns you wouldn't really use it at all. Now, moving on to tier 2, this is where the main strength of the Dwarves come in, comes into play. In the vast majority of campaigns, or in all of the Dwarven campaigns, the units you want to get en masse are Quarrelers. Both the regular Quarreler version with shield and the Great Weapon version. Now, here's the thing about Quarrelers. While Quarrelers are not as good in pure melee as uh, the Dwarf Warriors, they are a pretty powerful range unit. In fact, they're one of the more powerful range units in the game early on. They may not hold up so well in the very late game compared to some other units, but for the dwarves, what choices do you have? You have either quarrelers or thunderers, the pro or rangers. Well, rangers, when when you compare them to rangers, rangers might be better in melee, though they have less armor, so they'll take more damage. Though they will do more damage as well. Um, rangers might be better in melee, but then when it comes to range strength, with the exception of their stealth, they won't do necessarily better, because they're both using the same kind of weapon. Thunderers might do better, but the problem with Thunderers is that they're gunpowder units. And because of that, while Thunderers might out-DPS uh, Quarrelers, the issue that gets created is that in a lot of battles, especially in Siege battles, you'll discover that Thunderers end up being fairly limited. So I would say it's not worth really using Thunderers in a campaign. Maybe one or two at most, but... Most of the time, like 80-90% of the time, you're better off just recurring Quarrelers than you are Thunderers. Now, the difference between the two-handed version and the one-handed version is the same idea as with, as with uh, the Dwarf Warriors. You sacrifice the shield for me melee armor piercing damage. Now, I don't think this is worth doing on the Dwarf Warriors because... The thing about Dwarf Warriors is they have that Silver shield, shield, so you're actually losing quite a bit with that. You're losing 55% uh, Missile Resistance. Well, Quarrelers are one of the best range units in the game, so they'll obviously do a lot of damage from range, and even without the shield, they'll do quite well against other range units. So that's not really, uh, you know, it's not the same kind of situation. And if you give them a two-handed weapon, they'll flat do better in melee. So a combination of regular quarrelers and quarrelers with grey weapons is probably the way to go in a dwarf campaign. But it depends on the foes you're dealing with. If you're dealing with factions that have more ranged than melee, yeah, obviously going for, uh, for the shielded version is probably the better bet in a campaign. But if you're dealing with with enemies that might have better melee, then yeah, going for the two-handed version is perhaps the better decision. Artillery-wise, you do have a number of choices, but the most important one in every Dwarven campaign is going to be the one you get at Tier 2, and these are, of course, the Grudge Farers. Dwarves have a significant artillery advantage compared to many other factions, purely because they can get artillery very, very early in their campaign. While Dwarves have poor growth in their campaigns, Getting to tier 2 is not a problem, and the crucial advantage is you can actually construct the artillery shop in minor settlements very quickly as well, which means you can recruit a bunch of grudge throwers very quickly in your campaign to help you in field battles and in sieges. And you should. Uh, two, three, maybe even four grudge throwers per army. So an ideal early game, mid game dwarf uh, army would be made up of Quarrelers and Grudge Throwers, just purely that, uh, and with, of course, heroes and the Lord in the army. Later on with Artillery, if you can afford it, you should, re you should start looking repl uh, at replacing the Grudge Throwers with, um, with cannons. Now, in terms of field battle uh, potential, when we look at the difference between these two. Like, it says it's anti-large, but 
when you look at the actual stats, when you look at, at the actual damage, that's not really what's important. Uh, the thing about cannons is they're just better than grudge throwers, uh, in, at least in terms of their, uh, their damage. They have the same range, overall the same stats, they just do more uh, damage. And if we look at the projectile as well, though keep in mind it is a different projectile, uh, so the cannons, uh, so the can so the reason it says it's anti-large is because, well, the difference is like you have explosive damage with the grudge throwers, which you don't have with the cannons. So both of them can be pretty useful. But the important thing about cannons is their role in sieges. They'll just do better against walls and against wall towers. And this is what makes the dwarven army great in terms of dealing with all those annoying sieges, because you can just park your artillery. Park all your range units, bring down the walls, bring down the wall towers, and then kill everything in sight with range. That's the Dwarven tactic in Sieges. Or you can just get the single runesmith with Ruin of Wrath and Ruin and unlimited battle duration and just win every single siege in the game. Because as long as you have the runesmith alive or the rune lord alive, which is one of the reasons you want to get a rune lord, is you can just keep casting uh, the Rune of Wrath and Ruin and eventually kill all the enemies in sight. That's uh, Dwarven Siege Tactics in a nutshell. Um, in terms of some other units that you get later on in the campaign, obviously organ guns. Like, if you're thinking about field artillery against enemy units, then obviously the organ guns are really worth using. They don't have the same level of range, but the damage they do is substantially higher than either the grudge throwers or the cannons. They're not so as good in sieges, though they'll still perform reasonably well in respect to that, but their main role is to be a field artillery unit that does a significant amount of damage in field battles. So they're quite effective uh, when it comes to dealing with large clumps of enemy units, more so than uh, the other dwarven units. I would not bother with the flame cannons, I generally don't see the point, like, the range on the flame cannons is just too limited, and while short range artillery can certainly work in some circumstances, I think, like, when you're looking at the dwarven roster, the other choices are just better. And besides, if you want flame units, there is a better choice with that as opposed to getting a flame cannon and that is iron drakes the reason i prefer iron drakes as opposed to the flame cannon is they're better to use in sieges like you can bring easily bring iron drakes in a siege like through gaps in walls and just annihilate the enemy the problem these have these guys have is like they're flamethrower units they're pretty damn effective in a battle but the problem you're going to encounter is there's a lot of situations where they just flat out won't shoot, especially in those annoying sieges. But if they do shoot, the amount of damage they're going to do is going to be pretty damn substantial. So making use of the Iron Drakes is, is great. Like in a late game Dwarf Army, you can go with two or four Iron Drakes. And then, yes, of course, having Quarrelers, Organ Guns, Cannons, Rangers potentially, those are your choices, I would argue. And then, and then I would also argue that having one unit of gyrocopters with the brimstone gun, maybe even two, can be useful. Or gyro bombers, really. But uh, but there's a, their use is going to be very very situational. I've talked before about in videos how one of the advantages you can have in battles is if you form up. A defensive ground and you want to get the enemy to attack you let's say the enemy is the defender they're not so eager to attack you well if you harass them either with magic or range units or artillery then they might be eager to attack you now i think this works less well with flying units than it does with like skirmisher cav or just a magician on a mount moving very quickly to harass them with that but this is the role that gyro bombers and gyrocopters can fill for the dwarven army i'd say that most reasonable choice are the gyrocopters, the brimstone gun, but don't um, ignore the gyro bombers. Don't bother with the regular gyrocopters, their regular attack is just not as good. This is the advantage of the brimstone gun, it is the range. Because, yeah, these guys can be very vulnerable to range attacks from the enemy, so having these guys with the brimstone gun just to harass the enemy and force them to attack you, because the dwarves are very much defense oriented in terms of their battle tactics. Getting the enemy to attack them is obviously going to be a pretty uh, substantial advantage. Like, if you can use these guys to harass the enemy and force them to attack your entrenched position, that can be useful. This is something rangers can do as well with the Fane. Uh, like, this is one of the things you can achieve with the Fane as well, with Snipe. 
is like you can just move you know a unit of rangers or multiple units of rangers that are invisible into enemy range and just start sniping them and eventually the AI will do something like if the AI is on defensive it won't stay on the defensive and just let itself get shot to pieces they will attack whatever units you, they can see and that is all to say about the dwarves Christine signing out don't forget to subscribe like and enable notifications and stay tuned for more